Do you have any qualms whatsoever about returning in the Starliner yourself? Um, why or why not? Um, yeah, we've like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, the spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem. You are watching Maximus Aviation. So after the first time I heard that little clip I started with, my mind has been going in a million different directions on this whole Boeing Starliner Alliance. But three weeks into a scheduled eight-day mission, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, who had just been informed by NASA that they may have to be stuck on the space station until August and maybe even late into September. And just after receiving that news, they had to have a press conference in space where they took questions from reporters on the ground to reassure the American people that Boeing and NASA have got this Starliner problem well in hand. And they both are confident that NASA and Boeing's Starliner will safely return them to Earth and their families. I'm not going to play any more clips from that press conference because it was basically a scripted cheerleading propaganda hostage video that these two poor astronauts were instructed to do and also you know they were told to keep all their answers positive. However, just like in a real hostage video, when you can always tell the truth when you read, or in this case, see and hear between the lines, it tells a different story. And I want you to listen carefully. And when you listen, be sure to keep in mind that these are supposed to be rocket scientists and engineers that deal in only facts and actual statistics. Do you have any qualms whatsoever about returning in the Starliner yourself? Um, why or why not? Um, yeah, we've, like I said, we've practiced a lot, so I have a feeling, I have a, a real good feeling in my heart that uh, the spacecraft will, br will bring us home, no problem. Okay, so did you catch that? Through nervous laughter, especially when she said she had a, quote, feeling, a real good feeling within her heart, that this spacecraft would safely bring them home. I may be wrong, but I didn't hear a test pilot or scientist talking there. I heard a nervous human being just hoping she will see Earth and her family again. And did she sound confident to you? No, not to me. However, the reason Starliner even exists is to allow NASA to have multiple vehicles to provide missions to the ISS, along with SpaceX and Blue Origin and, well, also to throw Boeing a bone in the process. However, right now, Elon Musk and SpaceX could launch at a moment's notice and safely bring the astronauts home. But NASA said that's out of the question. They will not be using SpaceX to rescue them. Why not? Well, because they don't want to look like failures, of course. Oh, and before I go on, I have a quiz question for you. Take a guess at who the oldest astronauts ever to go into space are. Did I hear someone say John Glenn? Well, that's right, because not only was John Glenn the first person to orbit the Earth on February 20, 1962, but on October 29, 1998, when he was 77 years old as a sitting senator, he was a payload specialist on space shuttle discovery. But this was a publicity stunt and a reward for Glenn's history as one of America's most storied astronauts in history. So other than John Glenn, guess who the two oldest astronauts ever to go into space are? That's right. Sonny Williams, who may actually celebrate her 59th birthday in September while still stranded on the ISS, is tied with a couple of other past astronauts. And her partner, Bush Wilmore, who is almost 62 years old, is, well, the oldest behind 77-year-old John Glenn. But I digress. So back to the hostage video. What we heard Sonny say there is that she hopes in her heart, not believing with her scientific mind, that they will make it home in Boeing's defective Starliner. Because after all, we know how honest and trustworthy Boeing has been recently. But NASA too, their track record is just as bad. So in essence, what Butch and Sundance are saying is they trust NASA and Boeing to return them to their families alive in the Starliner. Well, okay then, let's take a look at the definition of the word trust in the dictionary. To believe that someone is good and honest and will not harm you, or that something is safe and reliable. Okay then, so let's talk about trust. Here's another question. You know who else trusted NASA in recent history? Well, how about a teacher named Krista McAuliffe and seven other astronauts? While they sat patiently aboard the space shuttle Challenger that freezing day back in 1986 atop a bomb waiting to be rocketed into space, they all trusted NASA because NASA surely would never endanger their lives and God forbid lie to them. 
However, what the astronauts did not know is that the engineers at a company called Martin Thiokol were warning NASA even while the crew were sitting atop the rocket that they refused to sign off on the Challenger mission that day because it was too dangerous. However, NASA managers ignored their warnings and just mere seconds later before God and the world and those of us who were alive then and those of us who were even there to watch it happen, seven lives were snuffed out before our very eyes. And why, you may ask? Well, because NASA didn't want to look bad after scrubbing previous missions of sending the first teacher into space. But surely NASA learned its lesson from that terrible national tragedy, right? And they would never repeat it again, putting American lives in jeopardy. So do you know who else trusted NASA? Seven more astronauts. This time in 2003 aboard the Space Shuttle Columbia, which was damaged before it barely left the ground. And while the astronauts had the time of their life in space for seven days enjoying experiments in space, the management at NASA knew the shuttle was so damaged the odds were that they would surely perish on re-entry. So NASA, of course, told the crew of their dire predicament so they could mentally prepare for their meeting with their god and say goodbye to their families. Nope. Because after all, NASA said, what could you possibly tell seven astronauts if you knew their space shuttle was crippled in orbit? But at the time, the geniuses at NASA talked amongst themselves, asking that hard question, whether to do the right thing and tell the astronauts who trusted and felt in their hearts that NASA and Columbia, especially after the Challenger, that NASA would never gamble with their lives again, right? However, it was a question that faced NASA's mission control after they all discovered from ground testing while the Columbia crew was still in space that something might be wrong with the shuttle, and the odds were that it would never survive re-entry. As a matter of fact, Wayne Hale, who later, in a very Boeing and NASA-like fashion, actually was promoted and became the space shuttle program manager after the disaster, well, he said he struggled with this question after the death of the Columbia crew, and even publicly spoke about the debate, recalling a meeting to discuss the dilemma. He said after one of the mission management team meetings when possible damage to the orbiter was discussed, flight director James Harpold gave his opinion, saying, quote, you know, there's nothing we can do about damage to the TPS or thermal protection system. So if it has been damaged, it's probably better not, yes, better not, to let the crew on board Columbia know. Because in his godlike thinking, he thought it was best that the crew would rather not know. So instead of telling the Columbia crew to give them time to at least prepare emotionally, he said, quote, Don't you think it will be better for them to have a happy, successful flight and die? Yes, he said die, unexpectedly during re-entry, rather than to stay in orbit knowing that there was nothing to be done until the air ran out. So the doomed astronauts were not told of the risk. But hey, they trusted NASA in their hearts. And what did that get them? Well, it got them dead. So don't you think Butch and Sonny, who are both quite old enough to have witnessed both tragedies as they were astronauts at the time also, don't you think they are thinking about if NASA is telling them the truth? I know I do. And that brings us to Boeing, who built the Starliner, and is saying, don't worry, trust us, you're going to be fine. But I'm sure Butch and Sonny can't help wonder if Boeing left some crucial documentation out of the Starliner operations manual, such as they did with the MCAS system when the pilots and passengers who flew their new Franken Max trusted Boeing in their hearts too, that Boeing would never intentionally and unwillingly put their lives at risk. And how'd that turn out? Well, it killed 346 innocent passengers and crew because the newly convicted felons at Boeing lied and deceived the FAA and the world's regulators, and new people would die on the max. But they had to rush the product to market. So when it comes to Boeing and NASA, trust and hope have proven to be very dangerous emotions indeed. Trust and hope can get you killed when dealing with this monstrous duopoly. And while Elon Musk could save these stranded astronauts in a heartbeat, Instead of the public shame and embarrassment they would face, just as they face with the Challenger, Columbia, and the Max, they just say, don't worry, trust us, everything is just fine. So there is no real mission accomplished here, no matter how much lipstick Boeing and NASA put on this pig. 
None of us back on Earth, especially people who love Sonny and Bush, will breathe a sigh of relief until we see them walk out of the capsule in the desert with our own eyes. Well, that's what I think. How about you? Yeah, it was probably a little heavier video than the thumbnail may have portrayed. But love me or hate me, I think for the good of anybody who loves aviation, and especially those who love Butch and Sonny, it had to be said. So how about you? Agree? Disagree? Want to call me crazy? Maybe tell me I might be right. I want to hear it all. So let me know down below. And until next time, remember, yeah, this is Maximus.